Pivot Table Intermediate Mastering Pivot Tables Like a Pro For quite a while, Pivot Table is one of the top skills required of accountants and analysts during job interviews. For those who know how to use Pivot Tables, reporting has been made super easy. However, there are lots of issues that haunt Pivot Table users, even for seasoned Excel super users. Since pivot tables are not that user friendly as a regular table or a data list. What is the last time you forgot to have the pivot table refreshed before you present the reports and wished the pivot tables can automatically refresh on their own? This course will demystify pivot tables and show you a total of 27 additional hacks for pivot tables so that you can tame this Excel beast. Recap of Excel Pivot Table How to Tame the Excel Beast. In the previous course, we learned 18 pivot table taming maneuvers, including how to add customized formulas such as calculated field, aka calculated column, and calculated item. Second, how to group or ungroup rows or columns. How to set up data list as data table. How to fix changing column width. And how to set up auto refresh of pivot tables. So, taming the pivot table beast is your ticket to becoming a pivot table pro. Before we move on to the course, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lenny Wu. I'm a PD instructor at various online platforms. I received my MBA Finance in the year 2000 from the George Washington University. I'm a CPA CGA from CPA Canada. I'm also a Certified Adaptive Insight Professional and Certified Zero Accounting Partner. I sat as an examiner of OUTS or International English Language Testing System. Also, I was an exam trainer of TOEFL or Test of English as a Foreign Language, GRE or Graduate Record Examination, and GMAT or Graduate Management Admission Test. I have over 22 years working with Microsoft Excel, being a modeling expert in Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power BI. I'm also a proponent of OCR or one-click reporting and SSR or self-service reporting. Next, in response to some feedback from my students, I would like to share my thoughts on how this course is compared with other similar courses. This course is not an academic course like others that teaches all skills from A to Z whether they are useful or obsolete, such as building a VBA to filter a list that does not tell you which formulas or skills are mostly used at work. This course is a practical course where it capitalizes on my 20 plus years professional experiences in financial reporting and modeling. It builds upon my 22 plus years Excel and 5 plus years Power Query experiences. It has the top crucial skills handpicked by me so that you can get your foot in the door and survive in the office environment. It focuses on business uses versus academic uses. For example, how to control your reporting period with the timeline. It opens doors to more opportunities and promotions at office. In summary, I'm not teaching your skills for the sake of teaching skills. I'm teaching you only the relevant skills that will automate your workload and get yourself Excel at work. Okay, what you will get from this course. At the end of the course, you will be able to understand when to suppress and when not to suppress a formula error. Explore five intermediate skills of taming a pivot table's calculations and formulas. Discover seven intermediate skills of taming a pivot table's display and layout. 
understand five advanced skills of taming a pivot table, and recognize ten keyboard shortcuts in working with the pivot table. Intermediate taming maneuvers, calculations, and formulas. Number one, how to solve a formula error in the pivot table. Well, it depends. If the formula error is unknown, we should not trap the error. We need to go back to the raw data and fix errors, if any. On the other hand, if the formula error is known, we can either use a trap formula, such as if error, or in the pivot table only, we can go to pivot table options and check the four error values show box. Now let's demonstrate this in Excel. Now in Excel, we have a pivot table by subcategory for the year 2019 and the year 2020. The third column is a year over year percentage increase, which is the year 2020 divided by 2019 minus one to arrive at increase or decrease from prior year. Now we can see several errors. For example, for book cases, we can see an A error. And for fasteners and labels, we can see divided by zero errors. Before we want to hide these errors, we need to know the cause of these errors. For fasteners and labels, we know the cause because we don't have any sales for 2019. So we can't use the formula divided by zero. So we can hide this divided by zero errors. But for the NA error, we don't know for now. So we need to go back to the source data and see the reason. Now let's go to the data source, data by year tab. Now suppose we locate the error and fix it with the correct number. And let's go back to the pivot table, right click, refresh, and the error will be gone. And now we are left with the divided by zero error. We can either use the if error formula in the calculated column. Let's go to pivot table, analyze fields, items, and sets, calculated field. We can locate our calculated field year over year and put in an error trapping formula like if error will be showing zero only. Press enter, click OK. And now we got a column that shows no error. Or in the pivot table, if we only want to hide the no error, we can go to the pivot table options. Right click the pivot table, pivot table options. And here, there's a box saying for error values show. Let's check that box. We can either show zero or simply leave it blank, meaning if there's error, just showing nothing. And in this case, I want to show zero. Click OK. And now the no error is trapped. Perfect. Intermediate taming maneuvers. Number two, how to show a running total. For example, in Excel, we have the pivot table for all revenues by quarter. However, we'd like another column to show the year to date numbers or the running total for each quarter. For example, quarter one, 375K. Running total for quarter two, 902K which is the sum of 375K plus 526K, and so on and so forth. So how can we add this running total? Simple, there's no formula needed. Simply go to value field setting and click show values as. And let me demonstrate that in Excel. So in Excel, we have the pivot table showing the revenues by each quarter. All we need is another column for running total, summing up all the revenues by quarter. To do this, first we need to find total revenue, which we have already put into values. Now to do the running total, we need to drop this total revenue again into the value fields. So now we have two columns, 
of total revenues. Exactly the same. And then let's click the second fields that we dropped and make this as a running total. How? Let's right click value field settings. So rather than use summarize values by, let's click show values as. Here we need running total. So we need to click this drop down list and move down to the running total. Here is the running total in. Here running total, we need it to be by quarters. So let's leave the default quarters in there and click OK. And now all of a sudden the second total fields becomes the running total. So let's assign a name to this column saying running total. And let's quickly double check. Here we have the first quarter 342. Second quarter, which is the sum of 342k plus 485k, which gives us 828k. And now we got a whole column for running total by quarter. Perfect. 